In computer programming, a variable or scholar is a storage location paired with Oh my gosh, that is so hard to understand. Let's talk about game programming, specifically variables. We're going to be diving straight into Unity and this is going to be a basic of basic of basic tutorial for anyone who's never even touched programming before, a basic look at variables. When opening a new script, we're given a template here to work with. We're not going to go into any of this information now and just focus on what variables are. When I'm programming video games, the main variables I use are floats, integers, booleans, game objects, and strings. When we start a script, we want to declare the variables we want to use in that script. A simple way of declaring a variable is just to write public, the type of variable, float, and give it a name, speed. If we want to declare an integer, it's simple as public, int, player, health. If we want to declare a boolean, public, bool, has, player, died. If we want to reference a game object, public, game, object, and lastly, strings, public, string, player, name. Currently the variables are equal to nothing, because we haven't set them. If we want to set the variables, it's as simple as doing this, equals 100.0f. Note that with floats, you have to put an f at the end of whatever you're declaring it. Let's make the player health equal to 10. Has the player died? Booleans either equal to true or false. So, has the player died? False. The game object, well, we can set that in the inspector, so we don't need to set anything there. And to set the player name, we just write equals and write a name in between the quotation marks. So there you have it. They're the main variables that I use when creating a game. But what does this all mean? When I first started out, this made no sense at all. To put simply, floats are decimal place numbers, like 0.1. Integers are whole numbers, like 5. A boolean is either true or false. A game object can be a reference to a game object. A string is a sequence of characters. Some of you might be thinking, but what does this all mean? What does it do? How, do we, how does it affect a game? Well, don't worry, when I first started out, I felt very overwhelmed by all this stuff, but trust me, chip away at it and you'll get there. To explain it simply, I'll explain the metaphor that first got me to understand what variables did in games. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with a game called Mario Kart. Pretty much everybody's played it, but it's the same system for every driving game. Basically, when your little character drives around here, my he looks just like Mario, don't you think? As the character drives along, if the character ever lands in mud, the character will slow down and go a lot slower. Same as if he goes on grass, probably not, not, it won't slow down as much. And the same as sand. If he goes in the water, he will um, drown and the camera th guy or whatever it was in Mario Kart will pick you up and put you back on the track. Now, this doesn't just happen automatically. People tell the computer how to do this through programming. So what you could do is you could have a player speed and as the player is moving along you could have the speed set to like 100 and as he hits the grass or the dirt here it could say make player speed equal to 50. So it halves the speed making the player want to only drive on the road. To show you guys what I'm talking about I've created this scene in Unity in which my highly rendered specked out car drives along this awesome road until he hits the grass, in which he slows down. You'll notice on my beautiful high rendered car, I have a script called car. I created this script, and you can see here it has a variable called speed that we can adjust. Inside of the car script, if we open it up, you'll see that I have a public float that's called speed, and it's equal to 300. Note that this is also the same thing as what's on the car, speed. Then I've got a simple script that just moves the car forward. Basically the car is being pushed forward at the rate of the speed variable. And then I've just got a, another simple bit of script here that just says when the game, when the car actually touches the grass, just adjust the speed down to 100. 
that's it. If we wanted to make it faster when he touched the grass for some insane reason, we can set this to 500. You can see the car moving along at a speed of 300, and when he touches the grass, he speeds up. We're going to change that back for now. If we wanted to create a Boolean to if the car has a driver, we can simply write public bool has driver. And we'll equal that to false. If we go back into our game, we can see on our car script, once it updates, it has a tick box here. True or false. Has the car got a driver? Currently when we play the game, the variable does nothing. We can tick it on and off all day. But where variables become useful in code is where you use them to define certain arguments. I'm not going to go into detail about what if statements are here, but if we wanted to, we could create an if statement that just said if has a driver equals true, then do whatever, in whatever is in between these two curly braces here. And right now, this is the line of code that moves our car forward. So if we just cut that and place it in here, and you'll see when we start the game, the car isn't moving. That's because the variable has driver is not equal to true. If you look in our script here, remember that our dr has driver variable has to equal to true for the car to move forward, which is this line of code here. If I tick this box, then it will be equal to true and the player will move forward. If I untick the box, the player will stop. If I tick it, he'll move. It's as simple as that. Another thing we can do is we can pretend that the grass is lava and our player will die as soon as they touch it. If we go back to our script here, we can reference the uh, player game object by simply writing public game object player. And then instead of changing our speed when our player hits the grass, in between these two curly braces, we can comment out this line of code and we can simply write destroy player. And it destroys this player game object, whatever this game object is here. If I named it something else here, you'll notice it's going to throw an error. It has to be named the exact same thing. So, when our player touches the grass, we're going to pretend in our minds that it's lava and it's going to destroy our player. Now, if we go back into Unity, you'll see on our car game object, we have a new section here for player. If we drag the car game object over onto the player section of our car script, when we press play, make sure that it make sure it has a driver, the car will move along until it hits the grass, in which case it will die. Because it's not normal grass, it's magic lava grass. Now, wasn't the most spectacular thing in the world, but I hope that gives you a understanding of what variables are on the most basic level inside of games and game programming. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you check out the other videos I have on this channel. Make sure you like, favorite, subscribe, it really helps out this channel. If you want to see some more tutorials, I have a tutorial here that's a procedurally generated infinite runner. Uh, we do it in under three hours. I think it's actually a little bit over three hours, but either way, it's a good ride. And also, if you want to check out uh, mobile development, I've got a tutorial for that as well, where I break down every single step from start to finish and releasing a game on the App Store. So feel free to check those both out. Otherwise, see you guys later.